Scorpio, mid-January to mid-February, 2022. This cycle for you is pretty intense, but you yourself are pretty intense as the sign of Scorpio is known to be pretty deep and purifying and getting to the deep guts of things and cleaning up the mess and doing the dirty work. So I'm sure you will handle this well. Um, your pure magic oracle cards, you got two and they coincide very much with your reading, which is always nice to see that there's some synchronicity um, within that. And one of the cards is actually, a, I would consider a card of Scorpio. Um, it doesn't go too much into the signs in this deck, um, but the energy is very much a Scorpionic sign. Um, and energy. Uh, so let's start with your underlying oracle, the Banyan Blessings. Um, this is about being grateful for the security that, that Mother Nature offers us in all things, um, the blessings that come from the natural order of things. And even in, within the Banyan tree, there's usually it's a pretty invasive um, kind of parasitic type of tree that grows off of another tree um, to support itself. And its roots then touch into the ground and go deep, deep into the earth. It's um, developing a sense of security once again, after a time of deep, rebirth and, and growth, and all the plants underneath the banyan, not even a single blade of, uh, blade of grass grows because it completely, it needs all that energy to do what it does. It doesn't produce fruit. It simply is a type of canopy tree that offers shade, really, but that is its nature. So it's staying true to your own nature and yet creating stability from, from a time of maybe challenge in your life, expanding um, and doing so, it's a very, solo card it's it doesn't need anything else it just except for what mother nature gives it um, the basic needs now that's your underlying energy um, your cards that were pulled telekinesis and mirror magic they are about the willpower and influence it takes to overcome any obstacles in your life and developing that belief in yourself that you can make things happen for yourself and mirror magic is more of your kind of scorpionic energy from this reading. It's about being in touch with the subconscious realms within yourself, knowing that sometimes, even in darkness, there is a purpose for the lack of clarity or the lens of darkness that we have to look through and even in darkness we can find ourselves and more so we find ourselves even faster than we might 
in the light, but we are never without light because the moon reflects all light in the night when she's out. And you're having this duality of reflecting upon your past and seeing the mirroring that others around you are doing based on your own inner understanding of yourself. It's the spectrum of who we are, the shadow aspect of ourselves that we see in others that is triggering for us many times. And it's hard to accept, but that is your obstacle this month to understand that something out there that is bothering you is actually a part of you in a big way. It is also learning to love ourselves as we are in our true nature and reflecting that outward into our world and seeing that reflected back to us from others and the universe. <clears throat> Your underlying tarot is the Ace of Wands. My camera's frozen, so you'll have to bear with me. Um, the match that's being lit under your butt this month, period, or this cycle. You presently are going through kind of a rough time, I'd say. You feel like you don't have what you need. You might feel like things aren't fair. And this is just your personal view at this time. It's not exactly the universal truth of the matter. Because I see there being light in that window during the cold months where you feel out in the cold and there's hope in there there's hope somewhere around you that you're not seeing in this situation and this could have been from some kind of um, organizational action that's led you into this place. Um, it could have been somebody's justice against you or your justice against someone else. But you're feeling alone. And that you don't have what you need and it's and you're feeling the harshness of life what surrounds you though and overcasts the situation is this ending of a huge cycle in your life it's as if the wheel I say it's as if you're being born again with a new slate starting completely over having done the dirty work something has ended and something
Mary, we meet again. I have tried to record this reading a couple of times now. We are getting into Mercury retrograde and for some reason my sound keeps freezing, uh, audio keeps freezing, and my, my uh, camera keeps freezing. So we are going to try this again and I'll probably have to cut in um, do some light video editing on this video, which I don't like to do just because I like it to be organic. Um, but sometimes desperate times call for desperate measures. Not that we're ever desperate, but maybe drastic is more of the word. <laughs> oh. Um, but there is a sense of desperation here at the center of your reading. Just know that you are cloaked by the universe. Um, that whatever obstacles are in your way, you will develop a willpower and influence over them, and you are able to see your shadow in others now. You are able to see in the darkness because you went through a time of darkness and are going through a time of darkness currently. But it was forced time out before. Now it is chosen. You've chose to be the hermit, to go off on your pilgrimage. You've learned a new way of being. It's like you're more monk now, and not monk like a character in a movie, like, like a spiritual person now. You've gained spiritual enlightenment and are now bringing that hope that you, in the future, you'll be bringing that hope with you when you find it. Because it's right in there. It's, it's right, right in front of your nose in this dark time that you're going through. And it might feel unfair right now, but you're being, mm, you're being um, made into a spiritual guru of sorts. You're getting very clear on what's been in the deep recesses of your mind and you're completing this cycle. You're changing, you're, you're starting anew, there's a new slate. Your advice is to communicate with others and I also feel in the future you won't be forced out of communication with others. You will choose silence in the midst of others, knowing that you hold the light for others and for yourself. You aren't in, you won't be in darkness anymore. You will be a guiding light in this dark world are in the darkness of night for many. So you are becoming kind of the poster child of whatever you're going through. And it's going to help other people. And you might not see that right now because it might be feeling pretty awful. But it is very important. It's you have a lot of major arcana here too. You have one, two, three, four, five major arcana. So this is definitely like the divine is with you. The the force is with you right now so don't feel alone find it find the hope and the faith because someday you're going to show others that are in a similar situation to you how you did it how you got to where you are t today which will be tomorrow okay your advice There'll be a lot of communication coming in. And your advice is to 
not it's a complicated message really the eight of cups is about walking away from what doesn't emotionally serve us even though we have love for it it is not fulfilling enough because sometimes love just isn't enough like the song says sometimes we know we need more emotionally than what we're getting from a situation and we with the eight of cups we take a leave to find the emotional contentment and satisfaction and gratification because it just isn't enough well it's in the reverse so what I'm getting from that with the eight so there's two eights one in the upright and one in the reverse eight is a number of infinity on its side it's the Ouroboros and here what is it in this please tell me it is it's in no it's not in this card I could have sworn we had Ouroboros in one of these cards it might have been the reading before well it's funny that it's coming up now um the Ouroboros, the snake eating its own tail, the infinity, it's the cycles of life that keep coming and going and coming and going. It's, there is a cycle here that you are breaking because you've changed. Maybe you aren't going to walk away from communication anymore when it gets emotionally too much for you maybe your emotional dissatisfaction with something you are learning that it's coming from a place of dissatisfaction with yourself And you're changing a pattern here. And so maybe there's always been, we'll take, we'll say an example, because this could be different for all of you. There is somebody in your life that has shown you great love and romantically. And you've always just been like, meh, neither here, neither near, there with that person. You've never really you've always wanted more from the situation or of a situation and kind of backburnered this person and kind of didn't give them the time of day that maybe they deserved because of something that was going on with you at a core level but maybe they deserved it and maybe that emotional dissatisfaction was coming from a place that wasn't necessarily the healthiest. And now you are starting to look at this communication with this person. When they, when they come in communicating with you, you may, have, you may have to or want to start taking a second look at why something isn't emotionally serving you anymore because in doing that you may be able to quickly solve this piece of the puzzle that you may find what emotionally does what you are looking for maybe this doesn't this person doesn't present that to you but you maybe don't know what it is about them that isn't reg registering with you 
it's important to maybe take a second look because this is somebody who knows that this is, this, these cups aren't worth it to them to stay. They have the love for that, what was, but they're going on to greener pastures. They're hoping that there's something better out there. This might be maybe taking a second look at what we've not been seeing as desirable and finding it within ourselves to try again. It also could be There's a balance here. So there might be more of a willingness on your part to communicate more than you have been. It's, I think that what Spirit is saying is that it's time for you to start being more excited about life, about the incoming messages, about getting back out there in whatever context this reading is implying or applies to you in your life. And to maybe this is lighting a match, see? So the Nine of Rods is entering the end of a, completing a cycle. It's like you've been through a dull and harsh time or, or are going through a harsh time and your advice is to light a match under your own butt get excited about life again because there's you might find what you're looking for you might be able to change a cycle, if you change a cycle or a pattern within your emotional and communication world, you and your passions, you and you get more passionate about something, you very well could change your life and or at least we don't need to go back to the way we were before, but we can still, it's almost like you're becoming the martyr, that you have this martyrdom, solemn, stoic, kind of monk, like I'm not allowed to smile, I'm not allowed to love, I'm not allowed to try again, I'm, and, other people are coming in seeing you as really suffering they're seeing this as as like self a cycle of just stress and self abuse and then the next step of this is like a total manifestation of the worst case scenario. Now we, we all have a different worst case scenario and every situation has a different worst case scenario. But they see it as a, a terrible ending. And I don't think that's what it is. I think that you have the ability to yes, walk away from what doesn't emotionally serve you anymore. But find out what does and be excited about it and go for it because here we see 
the image that you're portraying or the perceptions of others about your circumstances, yes, sometimes what others see is, is a bigger part of the picture that we're, we're not able to look at in the way that they can. So yes, it is their truth about our situation, but there's so much more to what you've been through and what you're going through than doom and gloom and I'm not allowed to smile and I must grieve and I must, I, mu I won't even allow myself to grieve because that would just be too much. So it's as if you're denying yourself emotional satisfaction And the advice is to not do that and don't let other people's perception of your situation affect you mentally. Don't care so much about what others are thinking about what you're going through. Don't let them pity party you. You've made it this far and you'll go through other things in your life and but that doesn't take away from who you are. It builds who you are. It helps you see that you're a survivor and that you've bounced back from just trial after trial and that you are resilient. This is the end of a cycle and this is the end of a cycle. I see this as the, the divine being like, this is a good thing. And everyone else is like, this is terrible. Oh my God, you poor thing. No, don't let people put their negative crap on you. It's time for you to move on. It's time for you to start taking the baby steps. It doesn't have to be overnight, but there needs to be some progress in finding happiness again and it's okay to be happy again your hopes you're hoping to bond with somebody on an emotional level in a sweet and innocent and beautiful way you're afraid that you'll have to constantly be on the defense and stand your ground and and just you're you're on edge you're still on edge about whatever's been going on and you don't want to have to fight another battle because you've already gone through a horrible one and you really don't want to deal with another one but what you don't maybe you're hoping that while you're fighting the good fight, defending your beliefs and, and what dignity you have left, that somebody who shares this experience with you, that there is an equal give and take, will come in and you won't have to be on the defense with this person because they'll already know what you've gone through because they share that that intimacy that bond that friendship with you the outcome now we said that in the future you'll be shining your light your hope that you've gained from a tough time out into the world allowing it to be the guiding light for others. The outcome is interesting. It is almost as if there is some the seven of swords can be deception. In the reverse it can be a deception of the self it can be deception of someone else, you deceiving someone else. Mm -hmm. 
a deception of healing, a deception of alchemizing. It's almost as if you have to fake it until you make it. That you have to think out of the box about your intentions have to be out of the box. Your intentions have to be out of a familiar their familiar their familiar cycle really. You have to do something a different way. And maybe the self the deception is really you're deceiving yourself that you're not healing or that you're healing. You, you can't deceive yourself that you're healing. Um, that's the one thing about healing. <laughs> it's a painful process, so you'll feel it. Um, it's, it's not always pain-free. We have to deal with things sometimes, uh, confront them at the core, at the face level, like look at them in the face. Look at yourself in the mirror. There it is. We have to face ourselves and continue to start to really truly face ourselves and love ourselves for our shadow and love ourselves for even the most deceptive things we've done. We have to go beyond that martyrdom. There's an obstacle that we are facing right now about looking ourselves in the mirror and really we have to do that. We can't deceive ourselves from that because we are it's going to happen regardless. It's just, you're buying time. <laughs> and when you get to that point and you truly embrace who you are, whether it's your physical image in the mirror or it's more of the person that you are and how you are being seen by yourself, and the things that you've done in the past and the things you're going through in the present and the, you need to understand that all of this was because you are becoming a guiding light for those who have gone through what you have been through. Who you are is a destined healing You're like a healing spiritual messenger here on earth for that's you got to think out of the box. You got to break the patterns of how you think about things. And in doing that, you will alchemize this deceptive situation, this deceptive circumstance, this self-deception and truly heal and be one with your true nature. You will change yourself at an alchemical level this month through what you go through and how you handle it. And by embracing your natural nature, and the challenges that that brings to you in your life and seeing that reflection from others. It's as if people are holding up a mirror and you're seeing yourself for the very first time and, and it's all of everything. It's the good, the bad, the ugly. It's, it's the everything. And 
to truly love yourself. Now, I'm not saying to love the horrible things that we can do to each other in this world. We, we don't want to get the wrong impression. This is... It's as if spirit is blowing your crown chakra open, flooding it with light, and you're sharing that light with others in a similar darkness and in the future. And this is the near future. This could be 10 weeks from now. This could be nine weeks from now, this could be nine days from now, this could be nine years from now. I mean, it's all subjective. It's, it's spirit doesn't work in calendar days. Wish they did, but you know. I'd still miss the memo, probably. All right. You guys, Scorpio. Light that match under your ass and get dealing with that darkness. I know that you can do it. You are our scorpions. You are eagles. You are our purifying. You burn up all that is deep and dark and change it rebirth it's the big like being born again seeing ourselves for the first time in the mirror after a time of martyrdom after a time of not wanting to look at ourselves and then sharing our story and healing others I love this. I, I think it's a great reading. It took me three times, but I hope it all worked out. We'll see. All right. Take care, Scorpio. I'll see you in mid-February. Bye.